Welcome to lecture 18. This is the last volume of notes for the Chem 100 course. There are six lectures in this material uh, and tonight we are going to do the first uh, on redox. We have just spent the last um, exam, that material for exam 3, where we essentially looked at two types of chemical reactions. We looked at double replacement reactions and we looked briefly at combustion reactions. These were the two types of reactions that you were supposed to be able to complete for that exam so you could write the products based on what your reactants were. If you were talking about a combustion reaction, if it involved carbon and hydrogen and even oxygen in the presence of O2 as a reactant, your products are always carbon dioxide and water and you merely balance the equation. Double replacement reactions we did two types. We did precipitation reactions and whether or not you get a precipitate is governed by the um, solubility rules And we also looked at acid-base reactions. We are going to revisit acid-base reactions in the next lecture, but acid-base reactions are still double replacement. Instead of making a solid, we generally make molecular compounds like water, maybe even some carbon dioxide if a carbonate is involved, and so on. The driving force for these double replacement reactions is the formation of a solid, in the case of the precipitation reactions, or the formation of these stable molecular compounds, in the case of acid-base reactions. In double replacement reactions, there is no change in charge. No electrons are transferred between reactants. That's not necessarily true in combustion and we are now going to talk about the other type of reactions. At the end of lecture 11 we talked about the single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, that uh, classification system, but then there's another classification system whereby you either do not exchange electrons in the case of a double replacement or you do and that is the type of reaction there we're going to talk about first in this material. Oxidation reduction reactions involve changes in oxidation numbers. They really cannot be predict predicted but they can be tricky to balance so you don't what I mean here is you don't have to be able to write the products like we did in the last exam. And they have a technique all their own because they can be tricky to balance. The technique is a step-by-step -step procedure we're going to learn how to do that today. Many of our reactions that we've talked about before are redox. Most synthesis, combustion, all single displacement, most decomposition are redox, whereas only your double displacement or your double replacement, your acid base and precipitation reactions are not. Now this is the key right here and it seems to be the point whereby students find this uh, material difficult. But you already know a lot about it, so we have to learn the rules for how to assign oxidation numbers. They are bookkeeping numbers that helps chemists keep track of where the electrons are. And since we're transferring electrons, this is really important. This is the heart of the matter. The rules are listed on page, 140, um, page 581 in your textbook. Um, and I've got them here in the notes and um, I've summarized them a little bit more than your book does. Okay, I'm going to scroll. So, some of you already know. Um, monatomic ions, all that you know about what sulfide does from the periodic table, for instance, it forms a negative 2. Oxygen forms a negative 2, sodium forms a plus 1, all those things uh, still apply. 
and those charges are the same as the oxidation numbers. So one of the rules in oxidation numbers is that the sum of the oxidation numbers must equal the charge. So for these single atom, therefore monatomic, monatomic means one atom, for these monatomic ions you can think of it the oxidation number is the adds up to the charge so therefore it's the same as the charge however you want to look at it. So you already know those. You can pick up the periodic table. You know that phosphorus based on where it is in the periodic table um, some, you know, sometimes takes a charge of negative three. Now having picked that one out of thin air is probably a bad choice. We are going to look at a periodic table here in a few minutes and I'm going to alert you to those elements that are just not dependable and phosphorus unfortunately is one of them. All right, but let's go through the rules and then we'll look at that periodic table. All ox oxidation numbers have to add up to the charge. I've already said that. So if the molecule is neutral, oxidation numbers will add up to zero. But if the molecule is charged, like a polyatomic ion, then the oxidation numbers have to add up to the charge. Okay, so let's do one without a charge and one with. Okay, so H2O, no charge on this molecule. Now, hydrogen and oxygen are pretty predictable. Oxygen is what you would predict um, from the periodic table when it's in a compound. So yes, it is negative two for an oxidation number. Now, these molecular compounds, there are no real charges um, like there are in ionic compounds. So in these molecular compounds, these oxidation numbers are bookkeeping. Oxygen has the higher electronegativity. That's why it, gets, it has an oxidation number of negative 2. Hydrogen having a lower electronegativity is at the positive end of the polar bond in the water molecule. And its plus 1 oxidation number is exactly what you would predict from the periodic table. Well, two plus ones and that minus two do add up to zero for the water molecule. Sulfate. Let's look at sulfate. Has a negative two charge. So the oxidation numbers for the two elements in this um, polyatomic ion have to add up to minus two. Oxygen is negative two. And there are four of them. So that makes oxygen negative, the oxygen's uh, a total of negative 8. So what plus a negative 8 equals a negative 2? Well, that would be 6 for sulfur. Certainly not something you would predict from the periodic table. Sulfur is along with phosphorus on that section of the table of elements that change their oxidation number quite a bit. All right, so what have we talked about so far? If it's an ion, single atom ion, the oxidation number is the same as the charge. Oxidation numbers must add up to the charge. If there is no charge, as there is nothing here next to the water molecule, then it must add up to zero. Uh, if there is a charge, it must add up to that charge. In the case of the sulfate ion, they have to add up to negative two. So, one of the one thing that's easy makes this kind of easy is that you you know oxygen's in an awful lot of compounds and hydrogen is and a lot of other things uh, elements that are very predictable making it easy to figure out the more unpredictable ones all right so add up to the charge um, ions if it's just one atom um, charge and the oxidation number the same okay all elements in their natural states have an oxidation number of zero. So it's like they have all the electrons they came with, so nothing has changed from their natural state. So O2, oxygen the element, zero. F2, fluorine the element, zero. Iron the element, zero, and so on. So elements alone have an oxidation number of zero. The rest of the rules follow what you would expect from looking at the periodic table. Oxygen is always minus 2 unless it's in a peroxide or combined with a halogen. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. OF2. Fluorine, unless it's the element fluorine, is always minus 1 no matter what. Highest electronegativity on the table. Well, if I have two negative ones here and they have to add up to 0, there's no charge here, then oxygen actually has a positive 2 oxidation number. Remember, this is bookkeeping. 
because it's negative 1 for fluorine times the 2 added to 2 adds up to 0. So that's a very uncommon case for oxygen. It is almost always minus 2 as we saw up here in sulfate and in water and in most other compounds. Fluorine is always minus 1. All right, scrolling. Okay, all other elements are what you would expect from the periodic table. In compounds, start with the ones you're more sure of, like hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Um, even though I've stated that the oxidation errors will be what you predict, there are going to be times when, oh, here we go, here's a list of those elements that are not predictable. That don't, you know, if you have nitrogen with oxygen or phosphorus with oxygen, don't start off with those elements. So here they are right here, okay? nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, chlorine, sulfur, bromine, and iodine. Some of the nonmetals, kind of in the same area on the periodic table, will be quite different from the charge you would assign. So start with the other elements they are combined with. You will be amazed how many compounds contain oxygen and hydrogen. All right, so we're going to do some oxidation number practice here. Again, I cannot emphasize how this is the key to this process. You cannot skip over learning how to do the oxidation numbers. All right, zinc here is an element, so its oxidation number is zero. Car copper, single um, ion, add a single atom monatomic ion, so plus two. Same as the charge. Calcium and chlorine, predictable. Calcium is plus 2. Uh, chlorine is minus 1. Now, if chlorine were with oxygen and like the chlorate ion, definitely would not be minus 1. But when it's in an ion compound with a metal, it will be minus 1. And there are two of them that has to add up to 0. So plus 2 to negative 2 adds up to 0. Over here, D, carbon tetrafluoride. Fluorine's always minus one. We have four of them. See, so I'm starting with that, not with carbon. So that makes carbon a positive four. Plus four. Now, let me make a point here. We would not say that fluorine has an oxidation number of negative four. Okay? It is, we always talk about it in terms of a, on a per atom basis. So we say that it has a minus one. We use the fact there are four of them to figure out carbon's oxidation number. But we talk about oxidation numbers on a per atom basis. E is the nitrite ion. as a negative one charge, a little hard to see. Start with oxygen. These oxidation numbers must add up to that minus one. So negative two times two is negative four for the oxygen. Therefore, if it has to add up to minus 1, nitrogen has to be plus 3. Plus 3 and a negative 4 make a minus 1. Sulfur and oxygen, start with oxygen, minus 2 times 3 means a negative 6. These guys must add up to 0. So that means that sulfur is positive 6. All right, so those are the oxidation numbers. Now we're going to talk about the process where the electrons are transferred. So if electrons are transferred, somebody loses and somebody gains. Oxidation is when you lose electrons and you get more positive. The oxidation number goes up. Reduction is when you gain. So um, you're reducing the oxidation number that's the easiest way to think about it because when you gain electrons they're negative, negatively charged so the oxidation number goes down even though you're gaining. As your book shows in examples on pages 585 to 587 each process can be written as a half reaction. For oxidation because you're losing electrons the electrons are written on the product side of the equation. Conversely, electrons gained in reduction are written on the reactant side of the equation because you're gaining them. They're going into the react reduction process. So let's look at these two 
half reactions. And all a half reaction is, is the species that's being either oxidized or reduced. If it's an oxidation, we're going to go through the oxidation numbers and how they're changing here. Then we put the electrons, how many were lost on the product side, if it's a reduction, we put them on the reactant side. All right, so how do I know that sodium is being oxidized? Well, here's Na. It has a zero oxidation number. It's the element sodium. Here's the sodium ion. It has a plus one oxidation number. So did the oxidation number go up or down? It went up, and it went up by one. So that means that it is oxidation, and you lost one electron. So it's key to understanding what exactly is happening by looking at how the oxidation number changes. And that's how you're going to know how many electrons to add and which side to add them on. Key, key, key to the process. Okay? All right. In this process right here, chlorine, the element, started off as zero. Over here on this, on the product side, it went to minus one. Now, anytime you're doing a half reaction, and those steps are below here in the notes, um, after you have assigned oxidation numbers, which is the first thing you would do, as we are doing right here, and you break them up into the half reactions, then you need to balance the thing that's being oxidized or reduced. So in this case of chlorine here, I have two chlorines on this side, I have two chlorines on this side. The reason you have to do this next is because it affects the amount of electrons you're going to add. Each chlorine went from a zero to minus one, but I have two of them. That is, a, first of all, a reduction. You're going down. You're getting more negative, so that's why it is a reduction half reaction. The change in oxidation number is by one, but I have two chlorines, so that is why I am adding two electrons to the reactant side. All right? Now, kind of giving you the big picture here, and then we're going to, you know, we're going to break those steps down, um, you know, one thing at a time. What we do with the half reactions is we add them together after we've added electrons and so on to get a complete and balanced redox reaction. That's just a shorthand way of saying oxidation reduction. But you have to have, the, these electrons have to be the same. You can't lose one and gain two. Where's that second electron coming from? So the number of electrons in the two half reactions must be equal. So that is why in this oxidation half reaction, we're multiplying the whole equation by two because I need two electrons here so that chlorine can gain them. Then when I add the two reactions together, the electrons cancel out and I am left with two sodiums plus chlorine make two sodium chlorides. And here, what I had here was two Na plus plus two Cl minus and I merely put the two back together again, recombine the sodium and chloride ions. Now, making sodium chloride from its elements, sodium and chlorine, is quite energetic, and there is a picture of it happening in this flask. Many redox reactions produce light and a large amount of energy. We use redox reactions every day in our electron transport system, Many of our bodily biochemical reactions involve changes in electrons. Batteries. Pretty much anything involving electricity is, an, is a, a redox reaction. Uh, very, uh, batteries, especially in these hybrid cars, um, are um, redox reactions. So very, very important. Batteries in a gasoline-powered car are also redox reactions. So it's a very important class of reactions. When we added those two half reactions together, we made sure that the number of electrons lost in the oxidation equal the number in the gained has to be, just like we've been balancing equations, both ionic and covalently bonded substances can undergo redox reactions. 
In the case of covalently bonded substances, as I have already said, the oxidation numbers do not correspond to physical charges as they do in ionic substances, but that does not change the process. One more little piece of a uh, little bit of um, vocabulary before we get into the step-by-step -step process. Sodium is being oxidized, so it is the substance that enables chlorine to be reduced. So I'm going to scroll back up and next to each of those half reactions, sodium is being oxidized, so sodium is the reducing agent. So it's like opposite. Whatever is oxidized enables the other thing to be reduced. Whatever is reduced is the oxidizing agent. Okay? All right. A little bit of vocab. Okay. All right, so here we go. We are going to learn the method. There are some easy redox equations that we don't need to use the method for, but we're going to start off with some easy ones so you can get the method down without having to, you know, deal with a more um, complicated example. Um, this method is like solving a puzzle. It's just like, um, you know, doing stoichiometry problems. There's a step-by-step -step procedure to it. Um, one of the things that will make uh, your life a lot easier is splitting up aqueous substances into their ions like we just finished doing in those ionic equations that you all loved so much. Okay, we're going to need to use those um, in redox if, to make things simpler. Um, won't be too much of that, but um, I'll draw your attention to it. All right, so we're going to start off with some single replacement or displacement reactions. Um, how do I know it's single? Because I have an element here by itself, and here's another element that has a partner. So it's like you go to the dance alone, leave with somebody else's date, and then silver is now alone, and copper is with nitrate. Now you have to go back to charges to predict this new compound, but that's not what this is we're, we're about here with the redox. Okay, all single replacement reactions are redox reactions because you always are starting with an element that ends up in a compound. All right, so let's talk about assigning oxidation numbers. Well, here's, let's, start, let's I'm sorry, let's do the steps. Step one, write the formula equation. So usually that's given to you, okay? So here's your formula equation. Now, step two, just want to get up a little, write the ionic equation if you can, okay? So the equation that we're talking about here, here's an, ex an example of you take a piece of copper wire, right here, just the element copper, you put it in a solution of silver nitrate, and the solution becomes more blue because the blue comes from copper surrounded by water molecules. Remember our little aqueous, what aqueous means? Okay, I'm not drawing that right because it's the oxygen that should be next to. Anyway, anyway, that is a blue solution. This stuff that looks like stalactites or stuff at the bottom of the ocean, that is actually the element silver. It's pretty cool. I'm sure you will do it in the lab which when you take 131. All right, so, so write the ionic equation if necessary because, and the reason why we want to do that is because we want to leave off anything that isn't changing. We want to focus on what is up being oxidized and what is being reduced. So if I rewrote this equation, of course solids must stay solids, that aqueous can be split up. Now don't add coefficients. This process, this step-by-step -step that we're doing is how we're going to arrive at the coefficients. Now, what is the charge on copper? Very important. Must put the charges in. The charge on copper here, each nitrate is minus one, so copper is plus two, and I have two nitrates. Okay. So that's what this you see right here. 
So in the notes, I've got the step-by-step -step procedure with two, two, twice with another example following this one. Now, after you've simplified the reaction so that you can assign your oxidation numbers more easily, that's our next step, and it is the most important step. The element copper is zero. Silver ion is plus one. Nitrate is on this side exactly the same as it is on this side. Let's put nitrate over here and go through the process of assigning oxidation numbers, but nothing is changing with nitrate. It's a spectator. All right, minus two for the oxygens. Three of them makes, this is negative six total. That may, has to add up to that negative one, so nitrogen is plus five. So later, if you need it, we've done nitrate at least once. But that's not what's changing here. On the other side, silver is now an element and zero, and copper is plus two. All right. Focus on what's happening to the oxidation numbers. Copper going from a zero to a plus two got more positive, so it is the oxidation. Silver went from plus one to zero, the oxidation number went down, so it is the reduction. Okay? So now I've taken out the two things and put them into two half reactions, an oxidation half reaction and a reduction half reaction. All right, so what have we done so far? Let's summarize steps. Of course, write your equation. That's your first step. Step two, if you can write it in ionic form, do so. It'll make things easier. Assign oxidation numbers, three split into half reactions. Now, once you have the half reactions, there are um, a couple of, there are some, um, you know, this is where all the balancing occurs, is in the half reactions. So, balance atom being oxidized or reduced, as we have said before. That is not going to be the case here. Copper, one copper here, one copper there, one silver, one silver. So we're not going to have to do that on this one. Add electrons to appropriate side. And the way that you do this is by looking, look at change in oxidation number. Okay? That's how you figure out the number of electrons. Zero to plus two means I lost two electrons. Oxidation electrons go on the right plus one to zero for silver, a change of one, oops, think number line, okay, when you're trying to figure out how many um, electrons, plus one to zero is a change of one, so there's one right there, all right? If charge is not balanced with the addition of electrons, we need to balance charge. H plus is added if it's present in the original equation. We are not going to do this type in Chem 100. We're just going to do the H+. That is not needed here. Let me tell you what I'm talking about with charge. This is important. This is why batteries stop working. Plus 2 on the copper. Negative 2 with the two electrons. That makes the charge on this side balanced, neutral but it's also balanced and neutral on this side, so it's, the charge is balanced. The same thing is true in the reduction. Plus one and negative one on the reactant side is a neutral, zero. It's also zero on the product side, so our charge is balanced. All right, write formula equation. Write ionic if you can. Assign oxidation numbers split into half reactions. Balance the thing that's being oxidized or reduced. Add your electrons. Balance your charge. Now we're almost done. Just as we did before, I need to compare the number of electrons in the two half reactions. They must be the same. In the case of this example, I have two electrons in this one and one in this one. So I am going to end up multiplying the reduction half reaction by two everything in it by two. I'm going to go ahead and scroll, okay? 
because that is done here for us. Then you are ready, once you've gotten to this step, to add them together. When you add these two equations together, the electrons cancel. Copper plus two silver ions makes two silvers plus a copper ion. Add ions back to form original compounds. We're not going to do hard, very much of this at all in Chem 100, but I have a 2 in front of silver. It was silver nitrate in the original equation, so I would put the nitrates back, and so on. Okay, And the same thing would be true with the copper. All right, sorry. Been a long day. Now we're going to do one more example where it's a molecular equation and I don't have an ionic equation. All right, so here's a nice combustion reaction. None of these species, they're all gases, can be separated into ions. So I'm going to assign oxidation numbers. Carbon is one of the ones I'm not sure of, so I'm going to start with hydrogen. Hydrogen is usually plus one. I have four of them. There is no charge on this methane molecule. So that means that the carbon is negative four, because a negative four and a plus four adds up to zero. Oxygen in the element is zero. Oxygen on this side, more reliable than carbon. Negative two, I have two of them, so that makes the oxygen side negative four. That means carbon is plus four. And in the molecule water, Oxygen is minus 2, hydrogen is plus 1. So now we're going to look for those changes in oxidation number. So I know how to split it up into half reactions. Carbon is obviously changing, and it is going from a minus 4 to a plus 4. That is a big increase in oxidation numbers, getting more positive, so carbon is being oxidized. But methane... Okay, this is important. Carbon is being oxidized, but methane is the reducing agent. So we generally talk about elements alone being oxidized or reduced, but whatever compound they're in is the corresponding agent. Okay, so carbon is being oxidized in methane, and methane is the reducing agent. All right, so... My two species that are involved in that change are the CH4 and the CO2. So I put those in a half reaction. Oxidation. The change number line, remember, is 8. They are 8 spaces away from one another. So I'm going to add 8 electrons to the right because that's where I add electrons for oxidations. Okay? Now, we're going to need to balance charge and hydrogens and oxygens. I have um, eight negatives on this side. I have no no charge on the on the left. So I am going to add H plus eight H plus to the same side as where those negatives are so that they cancel out. All right. That gives me eight hydrogens on this side. I had four hydrogens on this side. I need eight, so they balance. So I'm adding two water molecules to balance the um, hydrogens. So now I have four plus four is eight. I needed two more oxygens on this side, and now I've got them with the waters so that I have two oxygens and two oxygens. All right, so I am going to scroll and come right back. I just want to make sure that under my steps, we didn't really talk about the oxygen and hydrogens before because it's not really there. So I'm going to add it. Now 
it's there. And you will have this version of the notes. Okay, so let's go through what we did here again. We figured out the change in oxidation number for carbon to be a plus 4 to a minus 4. So we knew that it was being oxidized by 8 electrons because negative 4 and positive 4 are 8 electrons apart. I wrote my half reaction. I put my 8 electrons on the product side. But in doing so, that gave me 8 negatives on this side where I had no charges on the left. So in order for both sides to be no charge, I need to balance out those 8 negatives with 8 positives. And we're always going to add H plus to balance out charge, depending on, and the side you add it on is the side you need to add it on in order for the charge to be the same on both sides. Now it does not mean it has to be zero on both sides. It just so happens in this example that it is. Zero on one, we have to make it zero on the other. Okay, and then the last thing is to balance a hydrogens and oxygens by adding water. Eight H's on this side. I had four on the left. I need four more, so I add two waters to get four more hydrogens. It gave me the two oxygens I need to balance out the two oxygens here. If by at this point in the procedure, that this does not work out like it just did, you've done something wrong. And the step that I would go back to first is assigning oxidation numbers. That's often where mistakes are made. All right, let's do the reduction half reaction. Oxygen is going from zero to a negative two. But before I can add those electrons, I need to balance the atom that's being oxidized or reduced. In this case, it's reduction. So I have two oxygens on this side. I only have one here before I add the two in front. So that is why the two has been written there. So I have two oxygens. Ignore the hydrogens for right now. We'll take care of them in a minute. Zero to negative two for each oxygen, but I have two of them. So that means, and that's a reduction, I need four electrons on the left. All right, now having put those there, that gives me four negatives on this side. I have no charge on the right, so I'm going to be adding those four H pluses to balance out the negatives. And I needed them anyway because I had no hydrogens on this side and I had four hydrogens on this side. So this is what I'm talking about. If it doesn't just work out because chemistry is cool like that, at this point, go back and check your oxidation numbers. All right, so now if I put those two um, half reactions next to one another, the carbon one and the oxygen one, the number of electrons aren't the same. So I'm going to have to multiply the oxygen one by two so it ends up having eight electrons like the carbon one does. So that when I add them together, the electrons cancel. And in fact, the H plus is canceled. And I end up with CH4. Oh, wait a minute. No, I don't. Hold on. All right, let's see. Eight H plus, yeah, yeah, that's right. Eight H plus on the left side. Eight H plus on the right. And then we lose some waters too. These two waters go away and this is a two. Ignore this one right here because that was just before we multiply by two and then here it is right here after we multiply by two. So that when I add it up it's CH4 check plus two O twos check arrow CO2 plus the two waters. Okay, so a note about the H plus. I know that adding the H plus is weird. It was not in the original equation. However, it all cancels and doesn't appear in the final equation. You should never introduce a new species that was not somehow in the original. <coughs> Sorry about that. I felt it coming on and couldn't do anything about it quick enough. Um, 
You should never introduce a new species that was not somehow in the original equation and have it stay through to the final equation. In fact, water really does exist in a small part as both H plus and OH minus. We'll see that in the next lecture. But just a note about the H pluses. All right, let's do some practice and draw this uh, redox one to a close. Of course, um, you'll get much better at this if you practice, and I will be putting up some practice problems in addition to what you're going to do in recitation and on sapling, because I know for some students it takes, you know, more than it does for others. I can tell you that in my junior to senior year of college, I had a professor who gave us a sheet with 100 of the, these equations we just went through the procedure for. I did them all, and I will never forget how to balance redox equations. All right, in our practice, number one, the first um, one we're going to, first thing we're going to do is work on that assigning oxidation number since it's so important. Now we've just done methane. Hydrogen is what you would expect, and it is plus one. I have four of them, so that makes carbon negative four because the negative four and the plus four have to add up to zero. Okay? All right, CH2Cl2. Hmm. I guess I'll go with carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. Uh, ones on the right are generally the ones you know best. Hydrogen will be plus one. That's the most dependable one out of the three, times two. Chlorine has a higher electronegativity than carbon, so we'll go with a minus one for chlorine. So I've got a plus two and a minus two, so the oxidation number on carbon here is zero. Plus two for the hydrogens, minus two for the two chlorines. They already add up to zero. All of them have to add up to zero, so carbon has to be zero. All right, let's see. Chlorine, minus one. I have two of them. That makes copper, plus two. So really, in the case of C, you're not doing anything uh, differently here than we've been doing. All right, and then D, hydrogen's plus one. Iodine is the halid in the halogen, so it is minus one. All right. Number two, for each redox reaction, identify the substance being oxidized, the substance being reduced. Identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. So in order to do this, you must assign oxidation numbers. All right? So if you want to stop the video and give this a shot yourself and then come back, this would be a good time to do that. These two elements here, hydrogen and iodine, are both zero in oxidation number. This coefficient has no meaning in terms of assigning oxidation numbers. We just did HI up above, plus one for hydrogen, minus one for iodine. Now, hydrogen is going from zero to plus one, so hydrogen is being oxidized, and H2, the whole compound, is the reducing agent. Iodine is going from 0 to minus 1. That's a reduction in oxidation number, getting more negative, so it got reduced. So iodine is reduced, and I2 is oxidizing agent. Okay. B, carbon monoxide, negative 2 for oxygen, plus 2 for carbon. Hydrogen is zero. On the other side, carbon is zero. Oxygen is still minus two here, and hydrogen is plus one. So uh, nothing is happening to oxygen. It's the carbon and the hydrogen that are changing. Carbon is going from plus two to zero. So it is getting more negative. It is being reduced. Oxidation number went down. And CO, carbon monoxide, is the oxidizing agent. Hydrogen is going from 0 to plus 1, so hydrogen is being oxidized. 
and H2 is reducing agent. C. Aluminum, the element, is zero. H plus, positive one, same as the charge. On the other side, aluminum with a three plus, same as the charge. And then here we have hydrogen, the element. Focus on the changes in oxidation number. Aluminum goes from zero to plus three. Aluminum is being oxidized. Oxidation number goes up. Aluminum is the reducing agent. Hydrogen is being reduced, and H plus is the oxidizing agent. All right, one more. Lithium, zero. Lead with a plus two, same as the charge. Lithium with a plus one, same as the charge, and lead is zero. So lithium is going from zero to plus one. So lithium is being oxidized, and it's the reducing agent. Pb plus 2 is reduced from plus 2 to 0, and that makes it the oxidizing agent. All right, number 3. Classify each half reaction as oxidation or reduction. Again, you're going to have to assign oxidation numbers to do that and balance the half reaction. So we're going to focus on those steps that were above for just for the half reaction. Um, but let's uh, determine which kind of half reaction this is. We're going from zero for sulfur to minus two for sulfur because hydrogen is plus one and I have two of them. Okay. So sulfur is being reduced. And I have one sulfur on each side. That would be the next thing I would do. And then I would add, I'm going to rewrite it underneath, sulfur plus two electrons. The number of electrons that you add here is the same as the change in oxidation number. If you have more than one sulfur, then I'd multiply the number you have by this change to get the number of electrons. That's not the case here. I've got one sulfur, so it's a two electron change. It's just two electrons. Okay. And then leave a little room in case we have to add something else. H2S. Now, the next thing to do is to balance charge. I've got negative two on this side. I have no charge on the right. So I'm going to add H plus two of them so I can get two positives to balance out those negatives. Now the left has no charge, a net no charge, same as the right. I needed those hydrogens because I had two hydrogens on this side. So now my half reaction is balanced. Balance the thing that's being oxidized or reduced first. We didn't have to do that here because we had one sulfur, one sulfur. Add your electrons by looking at the change in the oxidation number, zero to negative two two electrons, it's a reduction, it goes on the left. Balance charge by adding H plus. And then if you need to add water, you can add water at this point, but we didn't need to do that. All right, let's do some more of those. All right, in B, chromium, this is a little harder one to figure out but not impossible. Negative two for the oxygen. Oxygen's more predictable than chromium. Transition metals, you know, they do lots of charges. I have seven oxygens. Now all of this has to add up to negative two. So right now I've got negative 14. And it has to add up to negative two. I've got two chromiums, so each chromium is 6, positive 6. That's a positive 12 and a negative 14 add up to negative 2. So positive 6 for chromium. And on the other side, same as the charge, I'm going from a plus 6 to a plus 3. This is also a reduction. Should have had an oxidation here. 
All right, it's okay. So it does have um, a balancing. So the next step is to balance the thing by oxidized or reduced, and I need to do that here. I have two chromiums on this side. I am going to add two in front of the chromium on the other side. Now that is going to affect how many electrons? Plus six to positive three. Focus on the change in oxidation number. It's a three electron change, but I've got two chromiums, so I'm going to be adding, and this is a reduction, six electrons on the left. Now, charge. I've got six negatives here, and I have negative two. So I have a total of negative eight on the left. Negative eight. The right has positive six. Two positive threes give me a positive six. These two sides have to equal one another. And the only thing I can add is H plus. So which side will I be adding H plus on to make the other to make it equal to the other side? I could add H pluses all day to the right, but it'll never come out to be negative. So I'm going to be adding H plus to the left. And I need to add enough of them so that I end up with positive six. So when I have a negative eight, what do I add to it to get a positive six? Positive 14 and a negative eight give me a positive six. I am going to add 14 positives. All right, almost done, because now we got to add some waters. This side over here has no hydrogens or oxygens. So I've got seven oxygens. It's easier usually to think of it in terms of the oxygen. So I need seven waters. Now, the hydrogens don't work out on both sides. We've made a mistake. But seven times two is 14. 14, I'm good. So we have balanced this half reaction. They don't get any harder than this one, I promise. All right, so first thing, balance the thing being oxidized or reduced. Let me do a little erasing here. Okay, so the first thing we did was put this two in front. Second, focus on the change in oxidation number. The change here was three, a three electron change from a positive six to a positive three but I have two chromiums. So three becomes six due to the two chromiums. Next step, the charge. Negative eight on this side, positive six on this side. I need to make both sides positive six. So I added 14 H pluses so that now it's positive six and positive six. I have no oxygens on the right. Or hydrogens. So I looked at how many oxygens I had and I added that many waters to the other side. In doing so, it gave me 14 hydrogens and I had 14 hydrogens. So we've done everything correctly. All right, we're at 53 minutes and I'd like to go over this last example. So the next lecture is also um, a bit lengthy. So let me erase what I've done. Okay, pause it if you need to copy and give us some more room so that we can do this last example. And certainly you might want to pause the video at this point and, uh, you know, give this a try yourself. But let's give some more room here in the notes. Okay, first step, assign oxidation numbers. Now, well, or we could break it up into um, ionic form. I'm already in that form. I have iodate and sulfur dioxide, which is a gas, can't break that up. I2 is actually a solid, that's what it should say there. And sulfate is aqueous and it's a polyatomic ion, so we're going, nothing here can be broken up. Okay, let's assign some oxidation numbers. Oxygen. Now one thing I need to look at when I look at this equation excuse me, is I see oxygen in a compound, oxygen in a compound, oxygen in a compound. Nothing is happening to oxygen. It's minus two, minus two, minus two. All right, but I'm going to use it to figure out the other oxidation numbers. 
So in the iodate ion, it has to add up to negative 1. I have a negative 6. So iodine and has to add up to minus 1, so iodine is plus 5. Okay. Over here, sulfur is negative. Um, is oxygen, the two oxygens make a negative 4. This has to add up to 0, so sulfur is plus 4. Iodine, the element, is 0. And sulfur in the sulfate ion, I've got negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8. It has to add up to negative 2, so that makes the sulfur positive 6. All right, next, break up into your half reactions. So, um, iodine went from a plus 5 to 0, definitely a reduction. So let's do our reduction. IO3 minus goes, I'm going to leave us some room to add stuff, to I2. All right, let's just focus on this one, and then we'll come back and do the oxidation. Now, first thing is to balance the thing that's being oxidized or reduced. I've got two iodines on the right. I've got one on the left, so I am going to put a two in front of the iodate ion. And I'm going to erase the reduction so it's not smack dab next to my, I'll put it over here. All right, now focus on your oxidation number change. This is plus five to zero. That is a change of five. And it is a reduction, but I have two iodines. So I'm going to be adding 10 electrons to the left. And I see I'm going to need more room. So I'm going to do some more racing. Okay. Charge next. I've got 2 minus 1. So I've got a negative 2 and a negative 10. This side is a negative 12. This side is 0. I need to add 12 positives to balance out those 12 negatives. So it has a net charge of zero. Okay, just like the other side. All right, now let's look at hydrogens and oxygens. I have six oxygens on this side. Two times three is six. I have none on this side. I'm going to add six waters. And six times two is 12. 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens. We've done everything correctly, and that's the reduction half reaction. Okay, I need even more room. All right, I can bring that back in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and do the oxidation half reaction. Oxidation. Um, sulfur is the other element that's changing. It is going from a positive 4 to a positive 6. That is a change of 2, and I've got 1 sulfur and 1 sulfur. So 2 electrons on the right. Okay. Now, um, charge. I have no charge on this side. Right now I have a negative 2 and a negative 2, so I've got a negative 4 on this side. I need 4 H pluses so that it has a net charge of 0. All right. Now I have 4 oxygens on this side, 2 on this side on the left, so I'm going to add 2 waters for the oxygens, and the hydrogens work. 2 times 2 is 4 on the left, 4 on the right. All right, I'm almost ready to add my half reactions together, but the last thing I need to check on is the numbers of electrons must be the same in the two, okay? So I'm going to have to multiply this half reaction by five so that I get my electrons to be 10. Now this is where the balancing comes in because this is what affects your coefficients. So five, um, SO2, plus 10 waters goes to 5 SO4 negative 2s plus 10 electrons plus 20 H plus. I'm going to take the reduction half reaction and write it underneath so it's easier to add.
All right, so now when we add it together, a lot of stuff cancels. Of course, the electrons have to cancel. I've got 10 waters here on the left, 6 waters on the right, so all 6 waters go away and I end up with 4 waters on the left. I've got 20 H pluses on the right, 12 over here on the left, so the 12 are gone, and the 20 become 8. So now, bringing everything down, 5 SO2 plus 2 IO3 minus plus 4 waters goes to 5 SO4 negative 2 plus I2 plus 8 H plus. And there we go. There's our balanced redox equation. Look for an announcement um, with more examples to try uh, to submit this in your brains.